For CMUEagles.com, I'm Brett Neese, alongside head men's basketball coach Jeff Sherman. Coach, what happened in Graceland that, last night that unfortunately prevented your team from getting the win? Well, first, um, hats off to Graceland. Uh, they played a well of a ball game. Uh, a couple things. One, uh, you have to show up, be ready to play. And uh, I just thought that uh, final home game for Graceland, uh, they haven't had the best of years. But uh, they showed up ready to play. They were mentally ready, physically ready. Uh, I think, I believe they led from start to finish. And that's, uh, that's obviously not a great sign from, from our standpoint. We played hard, but there's a, lot, there's a big difference about playing hard and then playing together, playing smart. I just thought that uh, all the things that we preach in our program, and a lot of things that we've done most of the year that's made us successful is playing harder and smarter and playing together. We, we just didn't pull that off last night. And uh, it's a tough loss, especially at this time of year. But... Uh, it's not uh, like it's next week where you're one and done. So from a standpoint of us maybe being able to take something from that game, uh, getting a little bit more hungry for our final home game uh, coming up against Avla could be maybe a good thing. But uh, the bottom line is we got outplayed uh, by Graceland. Um, they outcoached us. You know, it, it was from top to bottom um, a situation where they just kind of came at us a lot more than we came at them. So. Uh, it is what it is. We're, we're moving on, getting ready for Peru State. Let's take a look at um, Saturday's game against Peru State. It is senior day. Can you tell me what the senior class has done for this program? Well, first, it's probably one of the largest senior class uh, that's represented Central Methodist in my tenure, and that's 30 years. So right there, that's a, it's a large class. Seven seniors will be finishing up their, their final game which is a little deceiving because only five of them are actually going to suit up. Again, remember, we've, we've lost John Palmer and Eric McDaniel for the season. And, you know, John only got to play nine games and Eric only got to play 12 or 13 this year. Uh, I've gone out and actually, you know, the voting of all conferences has started to take place. And it's uh, no question that those two would have probably been all conference players. And when you lose those type of players, it obviously has affected our season. But nonetheless, they have represented our university very well, and they will be going out, uh, being recognized uh, tomorrow, along with the players that are, that are playing. Uh, Mitch Farr is probably the most uh, recognized from the past couple of years. He was third team all-conference last year. And he passed the 1,000-point mark here uh, last weekend, so he'll be going out and undoubtedly will be an all-conference selection this year. Uh, we have our one four-year uh, Letterman, Cody Anderson, uh, way back in Kickapoo High School, we, we had him come in, and he's represented our university top-notch and uh, has had a very good senior year. Uh, we have three players that really only played this one year. Um, uh, Brett Kurtlink, who actually has been a four-year Letterman, um, or at least four-year player in our program, but he played three years of junior varsity and one year of varsity, and I've got a lot of respect for this young man because his whole goal was to be a, a varsity player. And he went three years uh, proving himself on our junior varsity team, was one of our top players the last couple of years, got, a, got to be a part of a couple of uh, conference championship teams on the junior varsity level, and has, and has, has been our hardest worker uh, this year. And even though he has not seen the, the court time, uh, he's been a very big part of our program. Uh, Tommy Powers out of Grand Junction, Colorado, as playing only this year. Last year, he was out the whole year with an injury. That's kind of a recurring theme here we have here. And then one other player that, that'll be, uh, be recognized tomorrow is Greg Williams. And Greg transferred in from Mercyhurst University. He's out of Cincinnati, Ohio, and he's, he's had a tremendous uh, one year uh, senior season uh, in our program. So it's always a tough time from the coaches. Uh, we, you get attached to players. Um, and that's easy because you're part of a family. So we're very happy to recognize these guys, but this, at the same time, there's kind of a sadness that kind of comes in knowing that they won't be suiting up for us next year. Uh, they're always part of our program, just like all the other former players that we've had. But it's, uh, it, it's a touching moment uh, for our team. Uh, you never know what you're going to get on a senior night. 
but at the same time, I think after last night, I think our guys are ready to get back at it and step up and, and see if we can't redeem ourselves uh, heading into playoffs next week. In your last matchup against Peru State, it was a high-scoring slugfest. How is your team going to be able to keep Peru State off the board and limit their point total? Well, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I, I've got a lot of respect for Peru State. They they have a good team. I think they're the most talented team in the league. Um, they're also good size. Um, you know, six eight, six nine, six ten. At least one or two of their players. Uh, it, it is a situation that's going to present a huge challenge. Um, we didn't do a real good job with that necessarily the first time, but they've just got very good scores. They can take over a game at any time. Uh, they mix up their defenses. They play a lot of zone. They can match up, put a lot of pressure, man-to-man, uh, -man, full court press. They're just long. And uh, for a team to run their offense, you really have to be uh, on the ball. That's something we can't really practice. Uh, you know, we, we don't have that length even in practice to prepare ourselves. So it's probably one of the hardest matchups for our team, and it being our, our final home game will pose a tremendous challenge for, for our program. Um, I've always said it's one of the toughest places to go play because of the distance. So they do have to travel to Fayette, Missouri, and at least they'll have to deal with that, uh, that situation right there. But it's a very good team. Um, I'd like to think that if we're going to um, be a team that's going to be a threat uh, next week in postseason, this is a team that you need to be able to beat. And again, we're going to treat this like it is a first round playoff game here at home. Uh, at least put ourselves in a position to where we need to treat every possession as if it's important. We didn't do that last night. We, uh, we found ourselves down eight, ten points right off the bat, and we were over 20 points the second half. We have not seen that all year. And if you don't show up and prepare yourself to play every possession, and I think we've had a little bit of success of coming from 15 points behind. Everyone kept saying, well, you're only 15 points behind. You're going to be in good shape. You can't keep doing that uh, with teams in our league. We're just too, just too good a league. And we have to be able to come out and get a better start. And that's going to be a big focus for us uh, as we enter you know, the final home game and, and senior night. Looking at Peru State's roster, they have Corday Sims, their leading scorer. He's averaging over 20 points a game, and in their last matchup against them, they had three players that were over the 20-point mark. What are you going to have to do to shut Sims down and some of these other guys down? Well, and you're correct there. They Three players, three strong players that will undoubtedly be recognized as all-conference next week. Uh, Sims, uh, in my opinion, will probably be the newcomer of the year in the conference. And he's probably the best all-around player in the conference. Now, uh, I say that <clears throat> if Peru State were at the top, he would be the MVP of the conference. So he is the real deal. Um, and he's going to be one that's going to be a huge challenge. But once you start to focus all your attentions on him, they do have other players that can step up and score. The only reason I believe Peru is where they're at is they have not had all their players every night during the conference play. Hasn't been with injuries like ours has. It's been a couple of discipline issues and uh, situations uh, here and there, but they're a very scary team uh, once they get everybody together. And uh, it, it it's all basically stems from Sims. Um, he's, a, he's one of the very few players, I think, in the conference that can completely take a game over. So we could be doing everything right, he could still be uh, getting his points. I don't know if it's as much of us controlling him. We can't have the other two. Uh, or, or we had to get three players with 20. It's okay if he gets his 20, 25. But we can't have it to where the team is that balanced at that, uh, at that stage of a point uh, level. So this will be a, you know, we're going to have to mix a lot of different players uh, on him, give him a bunch of different looks, as, as, as we will with the rest of the team. Well, on the flip side, your team is going to have to produce a lot of offense. And who are you looking for to, uh, to do that tomorrow? Well, we, we needed a lot of offense last night. We just didn't quite get that, too. We can put up some points. Uh, and again, it, it's all going to come down to how well we shoot. We shot 21% the first half last night. And uh, we ended up shooting 33 or 34% for the game. You're not going to beat many teams uh, with that kind of a shooting percentage. And we have good shooters. But in order to be uh, shooting a high percentage, in my opinion, is you have to be able to execute. You have to have the game uh, go in the flow uh, of your system. 
That we didn't do last night. Um, uh, we are a good scoring team. We cannot let the game, from my opinion, be up in the 80s and 90s. We're not the kind of team that can win that game against Peru State. So I'm more focused on trying to limit them uh, of scoring a whole bunch of points versus how we're going to go ahead and score more and more. Uh, we have very balanced scoring, uh, but we, we're averaging mostly in the 70s, uh, maybe right around 80. If the game is going to be right around that area, we feel good about what our chances are. For us to extend that a little bit is kind of going out of the comfort zone and probably playing out of our, our normal uh, routine. And even though you have those nights, um, it's one of those things that that would make Peru happy. I mean, Peru wants the game to be very up-tempo, a lot of shots, a lot of possessions, and if we get in that type of game with Peru, um, we won't have as good a chance. So, again, it's going to be more or less really controlling the number of possessions so we can kind of keep them away from doing a lot of the things versus just trying to do more. Uh, but, you know, we have the players that can do it. You know, really, we feel we can go either way. Uh, but it comes down to the shooting percentage on that. And if we're shooting well, we don't mind taking a bunch of shots. Uh, last night, uh, Graceland just took the game completely over. They had good shot selection. They had good flow. They were getting the ball inside, outside. They had good transition. Uh, that's something that we can't allow uh, Peru to do tomorrow. With one game left in the conference and and going into the conference tournament, it is an exciting time of the year, but in the middle of this losing streak, how, how easy or how hard actually is it to be excited right now? Well, we're excited. Um, this is the most enjoyable time of the year to play. And it's not that we're playing, with the exception of last night, we're not playing poorly. Uh, it's uh, hitting teams on, on good nights. Uh, this is uncharacteristic territory for us. We have not hit this type of a losing skid, you know, we've lost three of four, uh, five of six, wh whatever that might be, <clears throat> and we were on a on verge of, a, of a, what, would, what many would consider an easy 21 season. We still have that uh, luxury to shoot for. But what we have to be able to do is not focus on what, what's already happened. We're, we're a good enough team, and I think you would get this from most anybody in our league, that we're a good enough team to still win this thing through. But a lot of teams are that way. And uh, we get an opportunity to still keep playing. And uh, that's, uh, that's how we're really approached it, not what we've kind of got ourselves into right now. We still have an opportunity to, to make it good. So if we can come up with a good effort and a good game Saturday, we can go into next week. And the thing about next week, every team is 0-0. Zero and zero. You could have been 29-2 and 2-29, and, two and, and you start next week 0-0. Zero and zero. And that's what we plan to, to look at it. And uh, it's going to be one game at a time, whichever team we draw. But uh, we need some momentum. Uh, I'll be honest, we need some momentum. And Saturday is our opportunity to get that. So we can we control our destiny, and that's what we want. That's what we've always asked for, and that's what we'll be working for tomorrow. Central Methodist takes on Peru State College tomorrow, February 28th. It is Senior Day. Tip-off is set for 4 p.m. It's the last game of the regular season. Coach, good luck. You betcha. Thank you.